Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Frank McMillan, Jr. I'm a, a medical doctor here at uh, Core Physicians Gastroenterology Division and also I'm affiliated with Exeter Hospital. I'm here today to talk to you about uh, colorectal cancer screening. Um, I think in the context of uh, COVID-19, it's become all the more important for people to pay attention to their screenings because the whole purpose of screening for disease is to find it uh, in asymptomatic healthy adults so that you can uh, delay or prevent a disease from ever occurring. The unique uh, thing about colorectal cancer screening is, is that in many circumstances we can actually prevent the disease before it gets started. Uh, there are several ways to get this uh, screening done and uh, so I want to talk to you about the different ways of doing it. Uh, one of the things that people ask me is uh, what's the best test for colorectal cancer screening? And it's a complicated answer, but uh, for uh, many people, it's the test that actually gets done. Um, so um, the preferred test of the American College of Gastroenterology, which is a group that I'm affiliated with, is uh, a screening colonoscopy once every 10 years. Uh, now there's some new information about this. Uh, right now, the screening recommendations are every 10 years starting at age 50 and going to age 75. Recently, the U.S. Public Health Services Task Force they have proposed and uh, they have written a draft regulation uh, stating that the age is going to go from 50 to 45. And so uh, once that is uh, finally adopted as a, uh, as a rule and not a draft, then uh, we will probably at some point this year revise our start date from age 50 to age 45. So that's where we are for colonoscopy. Now about uh, 50, 60, 70 percent of people what an alternative to colonoscopy. The advantage of colonoscopy is its high accuracy and its ability to remove the lesion at the time it's found. Uh, the downside is, is that it's an invasive test. It involves uh, time, money, and inconvenience. Uh, some people prefer to do things that they can do in their own home, and this is the role for stool testing. So one particular type of uh, stool test is something called FIT, which is fecal immunochemical test. And the FIT test is really nice because you can take the kit home, collect the sample, send it back, either dropping it off or putting it in the mail, and it will be processed. Your doctor will get a report within a few days. And uh, what it is, is it's a test for human blood. This is a big improvement over the previous test, which was uh, a cold blood testing by stool guaiac, which, re which relied on a chemical reaction. And that could unfortunately pick up uh, dietary blood if you had a piece of red meat, for example, or if you had an iron supplement. So the FIT test is much more accurate as far as detecting human blood. And we know that uh, many polyps and many cancers will shed human blood, and it's never normal to have blood in the stool. So a FIT test is a good test for picking it up as long as it's shedding blood. So its sensitivity is not as good as colonoscopy, but it's still pretty good. And some people will do a FIT test every year the issue is, is if you have a positive one, you don't do another FIT test. You do a, a better test, which is a colonoscopy at that point. So, and that's going to be a continuing theme. Uh, a more recent innovation has been the development of Cologuard. And Cologuard is a product that tests uh, the stool DNA for the uh, signature of polyps and cancers. And it's very good at detecting cancers. It's about as good as colonoscopy for picking up cancers. But in order to improve the sensitivity, for um, polyps, uh, they added, in addition to the DNA testing, uh, a FIT test. And when we get the result back, we don't know which one it is, whether it's the FIT that's positive or whether it's the DNA that's positive. So it's not quite as good for picking up polyps, and it misses about 50 to 60 percent of advanced polyps. Those are the polyps that can become cancer, and those are the ones that you want to know about. So if you have a Cologarden and it's positive, you really want to make sure that you get that follow-up colonoscopy because that's your opportunity, that's your window uh, to be able to uh, uh, get the uh, colonoscopy done so that the lesion can be removed while it's still uh, a benign polyp or perhaps an early stage cancer. Those can still sometimes be removed by colonoscopy. So again, it's the, 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 what's the best test? It's the test that gets done. But if you want to do your screening using a low, rate, uh, low risk, convenient uh, testing, then either FIT annually, Cologuard every three years is a good alternative. Um, you do give up some sensitivity in doing these things and the follow-up for a positive test generally ends up in a colonoscopy. So a lot of people um, 
might be hesitant to have a colonoscopy because they actually don't know how it works. And so, um, first of all, it's not awful. I've been the victim. Um, the second thing is, is that it involves a PrEP. And a PrEP is a strong laxative and that PrEP is going to uh, make you evacuate so that we can see. Um, that is usually done in two doses over the evening prior and the morning before your test begins. Uh, when you come into the facility, you'll generally be greeted by a nursing professional. Uh, they will take a brief history, confirm uh, the right patient for the right procedure at the right time. They'll place an intravenous uh, so that we can uh, give you a sedative. The test itself is not inherently painful. It's awkward and so we medicate you to make it tolerable. But you're really only asleep for a few minutes. The um, medication that we give you is uh, generally safe. Adverse reactions are very rare. The uh, exam works using a flexible fiber optic tube. And just to give you an idea, the tube is about that big and it goes through an opening that's already there. It doesn't hurt. Uh, and we medicate you to make you unaware of what's happening. When you wake up, you'll have no discomfort at all. That's the plan. Um, while we're doing our examination, it's just like looking at your skin. If I was to look at your skin from the outside, what I would do is I'd shine a light on it and I'd look for abnormalities. If something didn't look right, we would take it off. A colonoscopy is exactly like a skin exam, except we use a visual element a flexible tube to get inside so that we can do that careful examination. We can remove any lesions that are there and a typical colonoscopy uh, may take about 15 to 25 minutes. Um, and again, that time is inapparent to you because you're medicated. As soon as we stop medicating you, you start waking up. Um, once the test is over, you'll recover for about 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, during that time, we'll make sure that you're recovering properly, that you regain your consciousness, your balance and anything else. We'll give you something to eat or drink. Uh, we'll remove the IV, call uh, your friend or family member who's picking you up, and then you'll be escorted uh, down to our uh, valet area where you'll be picked up at the front door. The only thing that's different from uh, doing colonoscopy in the pre-COVID era to the COVID era is that uh, we do a nasal swab one to two days prior to your procedure to make sure that you can safely undergo the procedure and that everybody around you is safe as well. If you've had your two vaccinations already, we do not require any pre-procedure testing, and we have not for some time now. So if you have gotten your vaccination, um, there's no pre-procedure testing that's needed, and uh, you will still come and go in the usual manner.